Good morning, guys. So it's Sunday. It's nine o'clock and I have just finished a night shift. I wanted to vlog the whole night and let you guys see what I get up to on a neurosurgery night shift as a junior doctor. If you don't know me, then hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a junior doctor in the UK and I make videos about my life as a doctor and what I get up to in my free time. I'm currently working in neurosurgery, which is brain surgery. And if you're interested in hearing about a few more of my experiences then definitely check out the description box below because I've linked some other videos that you might really enjoy. I started my shift 13 hours ago at 8 p.m. last night. I'm trying to get into work but there's a fire alarm and we're not allowed into the building so I'm actually just loitering outside <laughs> waiting to be allowed in the security manning the doors so um can't make it to handover on time. Eventually I was allowed in and I went straight to handover to take over the jobs from the day team. On a night shift it's just myself and a registrar who are covering all of the neurosurgery patients. There are two neurosurgery wards and also a post-operative unit that we cover that need a bit more monitoring. You're responsible for dealing with any emergencies that happen overnight. You're also in charge of doing any patient reviews, taking bloods, doing cannulas, and also taking new admissions to the ward. So the new admissions get accepted by the registrar, not by me. And then once they've been accepted, once they arrive on the ward, it's my job to clerk them. Eight o'clock, went to the handover room. The day staff gave me a list of jobs, so patients that they needed things doing for over the night that they hadn't managed to get done in the day. For example, things like scans that had been booked but haven't been done yet. It's my job to make sure that those scans get reviewed so that if, if anything needs to be acted on them, then that can be done. I am on call for this shift and all that means is that I get given a pager or a bleep as we call them in the NHS and I just clip it onto my belt. When someone wants to page me, their phone number comes up and I can call them back. There were a few little jobs from handover that I just went and did straight away after, uh, after the day team had left, like going and prescribing some medications or some fluids for patients because they're quite quick, easy jobs that you can kind of get done and tick off the list easily. A habit that I've got into recently at the start of every shift is giving my workstation a good wipe down with these antibacterial wipes which are provided on the wards. And the area is obviously cleaned by cleaners once or twice a day, but I just think we can all do our bit to keep the NHS uh, that bit cleaner and try and avoid transferring bacteria from us to patients and vice versa. It's really important to stay hydrated on a night shift, so I always drink a couple of bottles of water. I have an iced coffee to keep me awake and a green smoothie, as well as a full meal. At nine o'clock, a nurse approached me and asked me if I would come and have a discussion with a family about a patient who'd had an operation that day, and their family wanted an update. Um, it was a patient with a brain tumor. They wanted to know what the prognosis was, how the operation went, and when this patient would be discharged from hospital. I didn't actually have all the information that they wanted, but I was able to tell them that the operation had gone well and give them a bit of information about what they should expect in the next few days. Then a new patient arrived on the ward, someone with a subarachnoid hemorrhage. They'd been transferred from another hospital because the neurosurgery department in Nottingham covers all of the East Midlands. I clerked him. Clerking means that you take a history, you examine the patient, you try and get as much of the story of that patient as possible and also get a baseline for how they are at the, at the moment so that if they deteriorate, then you know what they were like previously and you've got some documentation about that. They also need a new set of bloods taking and a cannula to be put in their arm, so I did that. And I also ordered a scan for this patient. At 10 o'clock, I was asked by a nurse on the, on the post-op unit to come and recannulate someone because their cannula had come out. And then there's also a patient who was tachycardic and I needed to review his ECG, so I sorted that. And also a drug chart to rewrite. It's just a case of writing a brand new drug chart. So that's quite a nice, easy job, especially for a night shift. You don't have to think, you're just like copy paste. At 11 o'clock I was called about the same patient who had been tachycardic at 10. They wanted me to come and review him again so I did and I asked for another ECG and I found that there was T-wave inversion so I was worried about an NSTEMI so for any of you that aren't uh, medical that's a type of heart attack. I discussed that with cardiology registrar. He was quite satisfied that it wasn't, he wasn't having a heart attack and that the changes on his ECG were due to sepsis. So we just monitored him and optimized his treatment for sepsis. Sepsis is like an infection that affects your whole body and his is actually coming from the brain, so it's pretty bad. 
Then at midnight, then another new patient came in. And again, it was another patient with a subarachnoid hemorrhage, but she'd also had an infarction in the brain, which is, that's a disturbance in the blood flow to the brain tissue itself. That's a stroke. And that caused her to have some weakness down one side of her body and to have some difficulty with her speech. The issue with her is that she's also she also doesn't speak English at all. So it's really difficult to assess whether she's confused or not, which is something that we rely on quite heavily in neurosurgery to assess patients. So the day team are going to get an interpreter in today to try and work out if she's confused or if we're just not understanding her very well. I managed to get a break in last night. I made sure that I did, even though I still had quite a few jobs to do and some other things. I made sure that I got everything done that was urgent. And then I took myself off and had a break because last night I didn't get one and 13 hours without a break is pretty tough going. And I wanted to make sure that I just had a chance to switch myself off and not think about patients or work for a bit. I think that's really important. And any of you guys who are going to medical school or working in healthcare or just working long shifts. I think one thing that I would say that is really key is making sure that you do prioritize getting breaks, making sure you eat, making sure you stay hydrated. Any shift that I've worked, I've never ever skipped my meals. Even if I don't get a break, I'll make sure that I have at least two minutes to just sit down and scoff some food and chug a load of water because I can't function well if I'm not fed and hydrated. I think it's unsafe and unwise to try and work without eating and drinking and resting when you can. So that's my that's my little takeaway of this of this vlog. It's half one in the morning, so I'm going to use this time to just switch off my brain, maybe watch some YouTube videos or do a bit of editing and just relax and read a book. I still have my bleep on me. So if there is an emergency or a new admission or the nurses need me, um, then they can contact me. So I'm halfway through my break and I've just had a phone call from the registrar saying that we are going to need to go to the theatre for an emergency case. So I'm going to go back to the office, drop off my bag and then go to the theatre changing rooms and get ready. While I was on my break, I watched this YouTube video that my sister sent me about a lady who practices extreme minimalism. And I really like the idea of it because you're kind of letting go of things. But she really took it to the extreme and she doesn't even have any furniture. I, I don't know how, how you could live like that. Time to get changed now. And here is my outfit of the night before I get into scrubs. I have these comfy, stretchy trousers on from Gap and super comfy Clarks from Shoes. For me, being comfortable at work is the one. <laughs> um, I've got a little belt on and I just clip my bleep onto my belt here. And just a simple jumper from H&M. And I've done my hair in this twisty bun. I still haven't managed to work out the right way of getting, <laughs> getting selfies in the mirror to show you my hairstyles, but I'm working on it. My favourite hairstyles for work are definitely the ones that make you look like you put in some effort but they actually only took a minute or so. I've got into some scrubs now and anyone who's worn scrubs before will know that they never fit you right but I'm ready for theatre. So I started getting ready for theatre, went into the theatre room and uh, got a phone call from the ward saying that one of the patients is tachycardic and tachypneic so I'm just going to go to the ward and check on that patient. The patient was tachycardic because he's septic. So I've just prescribed some more fluids, some pain relief, some paracetamol, and he's already on the right antibiotics. So not too much more to do, so I'm just gonna go back down to theater now. The surgery that I got to scrub in and help out with was probably the most complex surgery I've ever witnessed. It was someone who'd been in a car accident and their head had been quite severely injured. So we needed the MaxFax team, ophthalmology and neurosurgery to be involved and I actually felt really privileged that I got to scrub in and help out with that surgery. The neurosurgeon that I was working with wanted to perform an operation to decompress the swelling in the brain so by removing a part of the skull. So we went to theatre and I assisted in that operation and it was a, a really long case. I, I did a little car chat a bit like this last week or a couple of weeks ago when I got to go into theatre and assist with brain surgery so if you want to hear a bit more about what it's like then I will link that up above and I will also link it down below in the description box so check that out if you're interested. So yeah the guy that we did surgery on it was a pretty severe trauma I don't really know what his chances of surviving are after the surgery he's going to intensive care now so um 
I'll be interested to see tonight what the progress is with him, and whether he's made it through the day today. I finished in theatre at quarter to eight and I had to rush back to the ward, update the list so that I could then print that off for the daytime doctors so they'd be ready for ward round. So it was a bit of a rush. The day team started arriving as I was updating the list and normally they like you to have it printed and ready for them when they arrive, but I couldn't get there any earlier. But anyway, that's the end of my shift. I'm very much ready for bed. I hope you guys found this, this interesting. If you do have any questions, leave a comment down below and thank you so much for watching. If you have watched this far, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Like I said, I've got loads of playlists that you might be interested in if you want to see more of this kind of content. So I'm going to start doing a little shout out for you guys. I absolutely love reading all of your comments and it just really inspires me to want to make more videos. So today's shout out goes to the lids 01 thank you so much for your comment you always leave me such nice messages so thank you for that if you're new to this channel then make sure you comment down below say hi i love chatting with you guys in the comments and i love it when you guys talk to each other in the comments it's it's really nice i feel like it's a little bit of a community i would love to know a little bit about you tell me are you a medical student or are you working in healthcare or did you just stumble on my channel just because it came up in your your suggested videos and now it's time for bed. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I will catch you in my next one. Bye.